North Aurora Village Board meeting of Monday, November 5th, 2018. We'll open with a silent prayer or meditation. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Berman? Here. Trustee Gaffino? Here. Trustee Lowry? Here. Trustee Curtis? Here. Trustee Carroll? Here. Trustee Martinez? Here. And Trustee Gately? Here. Our first uh, item of business is a uh, presentation, Mr. Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Jamie Wilkie. Uh, Jamie's a representative of Lauterbach and Amon, the firm that audited uh, the village's financial statements for the last fiscal year. And so she is here to prevent uh, Lauterbach and Amon's report. Thank you, Bill. Good evening. I believe you have several documents in front of you this evening related to the audit. Uh, we will focus on the large bound document uh, with the pictures on the front. So if you have that handy, I will provide some page number references as we briefly go through. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Bill and Mandy especially. I know she puts in a lot of effort for the audit as well. Uh, this was our first year auditing the village and certainly that does not get accomplished without a coordinated effort with staff. Uh, we were absolutely impressed by the professionalism and organization that we came into. Uh, certainly that is not the case for every municipal client, so we do appreciate all the effort that you and your team put into the audit bill, so thank you. The first item I want to cover is within the introductory section. You should see a tab labeled introductory section in that large bound document. It's actually the last item within that section of the report. It's what we call the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, this is a copy of the 2017 award. Uh, just a reminder, this is another independent third-party review of the annual audit. Uh, really the highest level reporting that we can have in the government world. So again, I just wanted to point out that prestigious award. Uh, we will again be submitting the 2018 document to the program, obviously anticipating receipt of the award again for this year. Okay. If we flip to the financial section tab of the document, the first item you should find is the independent auditor's opinion. Uh, the goal of the financial statement audit is really twofold. Uh, one, we are coming in and providing an opinion with assurances that the financial statements as presented are materially correct. Uh, I am happy to report this evening that is the case. So we issued what we call an unmodified or clean opinion. And you'll find that within pages one and two of the financial tab document. Uh, the second goal with the annual financial statement audit is an assessment of internal controls. So we do have to come in and assess the control environment uh, through various testings, confirmations, et cetera. We have to confirm that we can rely upon the procedures and policies that the village has put in place uh, to ensure that the numbers being provided are in fact accurate. I'm happy to report this evening that we have no internal control is issues to bring forth to the board. So again, a very clean audit process. Good. The very next section should be labeled management's discussion and analysis. You're going to find 12 pages provided within this section of the document. Um, I know it's a very large document. There are a lot of numbers and disclosures. Uh, the goal of these 12 pages is really to provide that executive summary. Um, so I would encourage the board to review that section in detail. Uh, that is, in fact, prepared by Bill and his team, uh, really providing an overview for some of the major transactions and results for the year. So I just want to briefly highlight a few key items. Um, number one, there was overall positive results for the fiscal year for the village when we take into account all funds and all transactions, so overall increase in equity. 
Sales tax, we saw a little bit of a rebound there within the general fund, along with some of those court fines and uh, towing fees. So that did certainly help to um, make sure that those revenues were coming in according to budget. And also some cost savings in the general fund, most of those coming in the form of personnel and related benefits. So overall, our general fund, our main operating fund, ended the year with about a 69% reserve. So when we look at expenditures and fund balance that is required to be maintained on hand, uh, the village has a policy of a minimum between 40 and 50%, and we ended the year just about 69%. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, the water fund also had positive operating income for the year of about $167,000. Again, as you review those 12 pages, you'll find the discussion of those results. And overall, I just wanted to point out that the bonded debt structure for the village is um, less in 18 as it was compared to 17, so an overall decrease in that bonded debt structure. Uh, certainly, all of those items help contribute to that overall increase in equity for the fiscal year. The last section I want to point out is actually the last tab of the document. It's what we call our statistical section. And that will take you all the way through the last page of the large bound document. Uh, this is one of the required sections for the Certificate of Achievement Program and really a wealth of information in this section of the report. Uh, this section requires 10 years of trend information uh, for financial data, non-financial data, operating indicators, revenue trends, long-term debt, et cetera. Um, I always know our village trustees find that of interest. Uh, you can certainly find some good historical information within that section of the report. As I said, it was a very clean audit process. The other documents that you have been provided are much smaller in nature, obviously, in comparison to that large document, uh, one of which is what we call our management letter. This is where we as the auditors have the opportunity to provide any recommendations, uh, provide information on upcoming accounting standard changes, and really provide any communication to the board that we feel might be necessary in you know, formal written uh, report to the board. We have one comment this year. It is related to an upcoming accounting standard statement that will in fact change the financial statements. Uh, we as a firm try to make sure that those are communicated on an annual basis through that management letter. Uh, Bill's well versed on the new upcoming statement and it relates to post-retirement health care or retiree health care costs. Um, so we will be working with Bill and most likely an independent actuary to secure the calculations for that potential liability that will ultimately need to be recorded on the village's books next fiscal year. Okay. And other than that, no other required communications to the board. Again, a very clean audit process. I can't thank the staff enough for their efforts in preparing for the audit. I would be happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Or Bill, any other highlights you think might be prudent this evening? I think Bill wants to go through the hi highlights, some of the numbers with us. But are there any questions for the board? No. Very good. Thank you very much. We're pretty proud of uh, our staff and also our 69% uh, reserve funds also. So yes. Thank you very much thank for you. your work. We appreciate the opportunity to come out this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, I'm going to kind of walk through some of the basic financial statements a little bit once item number one comes up under the agenda. So, so I'll, I'll make some comments when we, once we get on the agenda after the oh, afterwards? after there. Yep. Yep. Oh, all right. Very good. <clears throat> Moving along then, we have a uh, proclamation. Oh, first we have a recognition awards, Chief Fisher. Thank you, Mary. Uh, tonight I've got four officers that I'd like, like to recognize for uh, something that they did above and beyond um, back in the summer. I'll read a statement on that. <laughs> On Sunday, May 27, 2018, a 911 call came in regarding a child who had fallen into the Fox River and was not moving. Officer Joswick, Officer Swoboda, and Officer Parr all responded to the area. Also responding was Master Sergeant Greg Minks from the Illinois State Police, who happened to also hear the call for help. The initial location given by dispatch was by Harner's Restaurant on the Route 25 side of the river. With the vague location and the mindset that a child was drowning, 
The officers frantically searched along the trails near Harners, Island Park, and Village Hall without locating the victim. At one point, the caller said she could see the officers, but they still could not find her. The caller was eventually located by Officer Joswick along the east side of the river, approximately one quarter mile north of the Village Hall. At this time, Officer Joswick located the victim in the river, approximately 30 yards out from shore. He was face down and partially submerged. The victim was actually a 39-year-old male and not a child. Officer Joswick removed his duty gear and ballistic vest and jumped into the river and swam out towards the victim. Once Officer Joswick reached the victim, he realized the male was large and very difficult to pull towards the shore. Officer Swoboda arrived on the scene and entered the river to assist, but noticed the current taking Officer Joswick and the victim downstream, so he re relocated further down. Officer Joswick struggled to bring the victim closer to shore as the current of the river took him approximately 70 yards downstream from where he first entered. Officer Parr was now on the scene and he and Officer Swoboda made a human chain to try and assist Officer Joswick to shore. Once near the shore, the officers, now including Master Sergeant Minks, had all entered the river to assist in getting the victim to shore. Due to the victim's size and the muddy, slippery conditions, the officers were unable to get the victim onto the river bank and held him along the edge of the river. Officer Joswick then started CPR on the victim and shortly after, Officer Parr and Master Sergeant Minks took over. They continued life-saving efforts until the fire department arrived. Unfortunately, the victim did not survive. Nonetheless, I'm very proud of all of you for your actions regarding this matter. Your teamwork is commendable and should serve as an example of how officers can work together to achieve a greater goal. Your professionalism and your training in this matter was evident. All of you risked your lives in an attempt to save the life of another. Thank you for a job well done. Based on their actions that day regarding this event, as well as a recommendation from Sergeant Dan Psycho, I am awarding Officer Chris Joswick the Department Medal of Distinguished Service and Officer David Parr and Officer Mark Swoboda are each being awarded the Department Medal for Meritorious Service. Master Sergeant Greg Minks is receiving the Chief's commendation for his actions that day in assisting my officers without hesitation. Congratulations to all of you. Yes. Congratulations, we're really proud of our police department and when you guys step up to something like this, it really, it really shows how much uh, can be done and how much we appreciate what you do do. Any other comments from the board? Job well done. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much. It's not often we see such good press. <laughs> very good job, guys. Very good. Thank you.
It's nice to see a crowd here too, for a good reason. So <laughs> we're not we're not used to this, you know. We only have one or two every every week. So nice to see all these happy faces. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is a proclamation, which I will read. This is a proclamation for a National Apprenticeship Week. Whereas the economic growth in the nation and the state of Illinois and in the village of North Aurora depends on the continued development of workers skilled in their chosen fields, and whereas apprenticeship programs help fill this need by providing the means for the development of skilled workers and the cultivation of pride in our workmanship, and whereas registered apprenticeships are vital components of talent and development in many high demand and high growth sectors and are recognized as critical post-secondary education training for future employment. And whereas apprenticeship programs help enhance economic vitality and create a stronger economic environment by producing highly skilled and competitive workers. And whereas the Village of North Aurora recognizes the strength and leadership displayed by apprentices, which results from the dedication and generosity of sponsors and participating employers who provide meaningful educational opportunities through on-the-job learning and related technical and academic instruction, which in turn serves to enhance the economic vitality of North Aurora. And whereas November 12th through the 18th, 2018, is being recognized as National Apprenticeship Week in North Aurora. And the Village of North Aurora appreciates the positive impact that apprenticeships have on individuals and businesses, which helps to improve the workforce in North Aurora and grow our economy. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Dale Berman, Village President of the Board of Trustees of North Aurora, do hereby proclaim November 12th through the 18th, 2018, as National Apprenticeship Week in North Aurora, and ask all residents to recognize the purpose and values of apprenticeship training for the economic growth of North Aurora. Dated this fifth day of November, 2018. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay. Audience comments. <laughs> no audience comments. Trustee comments. Consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Gaffino? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Under new business, item number one, Mr. Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I just want to thank, uh, again, Jamie and Lauterbach and Amon for um, their assistance and work with the audit this year. Um, I wanted to highlight um, a couple things in the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report really quick, so if you could pull out that uh, large document again and flip to page three. I just wanted to walk the board through the um, basic financial statements really quick so that they had a, and just highlight a couple of the numbers on there really fast. So if you turn to page three and four, this is the statement of net position. And as a reminder, the statement of net position is essentially the balance sheet for the village as a whole, broken up amongst <laughs> governmental activities and business type activities. So you can see at the, at the end of the year, the village had a total net position of 119 million. As a reminder, that includes capital assets, roads, but also includes long-term liabilities such as debt and pension liabilities. Uh, one thing to note there, we had an unrestricted net position in governmental activities of 2.7 million, uh, which is very good considering we also had, several years ago, added our pension liabilities as a result of GASB 60, um, 68. Flip over to the next page, this is our statement of activities, pages five and six. This is essentially our income statement for the village. Again, both these last two pages are on a full accrual basis, so very similar to uh, private sector accounting. And again, you can see we had a positive change in net position for both governmental activities of 867,000 and business type activities of 278,000. Flip again to page seven and eight. This is the uh, balance sheet for all our governmental funds. And the focus here is modified accrual, which is very close to cash basis of accounting. 
And you can see here we had um, broken up amongst the general fund, our Route 31 TIF fund, and our capital projects fund, and then all our other funds kind of lumped together in one column there, uh, listed as non-major. So as you can see here, we had assets of 20 million, liabilities of 5 million, and total fund balances of just over $15 million for the year. And there's where you can see the fund balances classified by restriction, either non-spendable, restricted fund balance, where we have an external restriction on the use of those funds, committed as um, balances are committed based on uh, committed revenue sources by the village board, and then assigned fund balances and unassigned fund balances. And as Jamie alluded to earlier, uh, there you see the seven million in total fund balances for the general fund, uh, which com mostly comprises the 69% fund balance reserve that we met at the end of the year. Jumping ahead really quick to page 10 and 11, this is the income statement for all governmental funds. So this shows the revenues, expenditures, and other financing sources and uses. So we had 14.4 million in revenues, 13.3 million in expenditures. Um, we had n total net changes in fund balance of 1.3 million. So total fund balances went from 13.7 million to about 15 million for the year for our governmental funds. Jumping ahead to pages 13 and 14. These are our proprietary funds. Again, we're going back to the full accrual basis of accounting, similar to the <coughs> private sector. Here we see our waterworks fund and our internal service funds, which consists of our vehicle and equipment fund and compensated absences fund. So as you can see here, we had 31 uh, million in assets and deferred outflows or resources, and 6.6 .6 million in liabilities for the water fund. And we have a net position of 25 million. Most of that is net investment and in capital assets. On the following page, you'll see the income statement for our proprietary funds. Again, our, our waterworks fund and internal services fund on page 15. And as alluded to earlier, we had a positive uh, income for the year of 278,000 for the water fund on a full accrual basis. Finally, I just wanna touch on pages 17 and 18. This is our statement of fiduciary net position. This is the um, balance sheet and um, net position changes for our police pension fund. So as you can see, we had, uh, jumping over to page 18, we had total contributions to our pension plan of 1.2 million. Um, we had net investment income of just under a million dollars. So we had total additions to our pension trust fund for police of 2.2 million. We had benefit expenses and refunds of 847,000. So we had a net change in position of 1.3 million for our police pension trust fund. And we ended the year with 17.2 million in um, assets for the fund. And again, that's versus about 28 million of total accrued liabilities, which is why we have an un, uh, unfunded liability for that fund around just $10 million. So I just wanted to walk through the numbers really quick um, and see if you guys had any further questions. If not, uh, we just would need a motion to approve and accept the report and place it on file. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Well, I would just like to um, compliment staff for doing such a great job of working within our budget and you know, and also I'd like to compliment my fellow board members. I think we're all on the same page, being yep. fiscally responsible and doing a good job with our taxpayers' dollars. And again, Steve and Bill and all the other heads of the departments have just done a wonderful job staying within their budgets. Thank you. Thank you. Like I say, I, I'm really proud of what we what we accomplish, what we do. With, Mm -hmm. what we have in, in our financial position. I don't think, uh, I think we're very conservative and very, uh, very strong in, uh, in, in how we make do with what we have. And, uh, and I think that everybody does go beyond their, what they're called uh, to do. So I'm proud of the village and proud of, uh, of uh, the activities, not only of our board, but of certainly of our staff. Thank you very much. Item two, Bill. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, we need a motion still. I'm sorry, roll call. Uh, Trustee Gailey? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Gavino? Yes. Item number two, Bill. Thank you. Item number approval two is approval of a motion approving the 2018 property tax levy estimate for the village of North Aurora 
and the Messenger Public Library. As the board is aware, we are required to approve an estimate for the upcoming tax levy per statutes. We are a PTEL community and non-home rural, so we are limited in what we can increase our extensions to CPI plus an allowance for new construction. Uh, this item was discussed in the Government Operations Committee on October 1st. The applicable CPI factor for this year is 2.1%, and the current estimate of new construction was just over 14 million. That's likely to be slightly lower due to um, assessment appeals. Based on our initial county estimates discussed at that meeting, we could raise um, total extensions by the CPI factor of around $50,000 and about $66,000 for the new construction allotment. As discussed at the committee level, staff feels comfortable when looking at next year's budgetary factors in setting a property tax levy estimate that is less than the max allowed by PTEL statutes, essentially freezing the levy that we had last year at 2,450,000, which is the same as, as last year. And basically, in effect, we would take the allowance for new construction, but essentially give up the CPI increase um, that the village is allotted to for the upcoming tax levy year. And again, this is based on a lot of factors looking ahead to next budgetary year. Um, we felt that we had a uh, more positive um, outlook than um, other concerns, even though those still exist. Um, so we are recommending essentially foregoing that portion of the estimate at this time. Again, it's just an estimate. We've also included information about our police pension valuation and information from the Messenger Public Library, their uh, board uh, we are required to include that in our estimate as well, and they've transmitted that to us late last week. Uh, we've also included tentative information on our special service areas, but again, all this will be finalized at the first meeting in December. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. So just to clarify, this would freeze the levy at the same rate as last year. So there would not be an increase. The actual levy that we levy would be the same as last year. Because our total extensions were less than that, the extensions would essentially um, go up to that amount, but wouldn't be further than amount than that amount according to this estimate. So it's essentially a tax freeze. I would call it, um, we are essentially giving up some of, it's almost half of what we're allotted to. We don't know the exact numbers yet, because we don't know what the exact uh, new construction EAB numbers are, are gonna wind up being. But essentially, yes, this is the first time in a long time that we will be essentially giving up um, what we are afforded to under PTEL. Well, I would just like to say I'm very happy that we have this opportunity to do it <clears throat> for our constituents, and hopefully going forward, you know, maybe we'd be able to, to maintain the same level going forward if we can. Any further discussion? Court call the roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. And Trustee Gavino? Yes. Item number three, Mr. Toth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number three is approval of an ordinance proposing the establishment of special service area 42 in the village of North Aurora, and this is for the Lincoln Valley and the Fox development. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Court call roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Capino? Yes. Okay. Item number four, Mr. Toth. Item number four is an approval of an ordinance proposing the establishment of special service area 43 in the village. Uh, this is for the residential component of the Springs development at Oak and Orchard. Motion Four. approved. Second. Discussion? J just a quick note about this one. <clears throat> we did touch base with them with Continental Properties because originally when this property was annexed, it was anticipated that the entire property would be commercial. But of course, it's been developed residential and we've retained a commercial component to it. Um, so we did reach out to them before we initiated the process and just had a discussion with them. Uh, the residential portion is actually owned by Continental, so there isn't a, an association that's established at this point as we anticipated we might have had if it had developed differently um, under the annexation agreement. And there is a separate, there will be separate ownership of the commercial property. Um, at, at this time, um, they kind of have separate, they, they've delineated between themselves in a cross uh, easement agreement their responsibility for the, um, for the uh, uh, landscaping and drainage and all that stuff. And this backup is just gonna be a single backup for, um, Actually, I take that back. We're, we're actually doing 
we're doing separate ones. We're doing a separate one for res residential and a separate one for commercial because of the fact that um, they are going to be under separate ownership. But, um, and they're on board with that. Any other discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Capino? Yes. Mike, number five. Approve an ordinance proposing the establishment of social service area 44 in the village, and this is for the Springs at Orchard commercial component. Motion, Motion approve. to approve. Second. Discussion. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Gaffino? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. And Trustee Gately? Yes. One thing real quick about that, we haven't done an SSA in a long time, <clears throat> so there may be some board members who haven't been here when we did one. This is just ordinances proposing. We'll come back on uh, December 5th. December 3rd. 3rd. Um, we have to have a public hearing. We have to send notice out to the property owners, publish in the paper. Of course, the property owners are single entities in each case. Um, and then we'll pass an ordinance actually establishing the SSA in December. Everybody clear? Item number six, Mr. Laskowski. Good evening, Mayor and Village Trustees. Um, this item is the change order in the amount of $19,225 from builder pa Builders Paving for the, 20, for the patching of Arrowhead Lane. This item, um, when I composed the memo, it was originally requesting retroactive approval because the operation was anticipated that it would be completed by now. However, at this time, they still haven't had the opportunity to patch Arrowhead Lane in the schedule yet. So this, this request is no longer retroactive. It is still giving the board the opportunity to, to weigh in on it. And what this is, is um, a public works employee while trimming a tree had been um, looking at the pavement on Arrowhead Lane. <coughs> and there were three areas where the pavement is, the surface of the roadway had essentially disintegrated. And, this road was a little bit different than some of the others um, that we've seen in town. And I think the reason that this pavement may have responded this way over the winter season was because of the mature trees. So what happens sometimes is when water infiltrates into the pavement, it can freeze and expand over the winter thaw, but it, essentially it causes the base of the road to weaken over time. When trees overhang and you have those nice canopies overhanging the road, it creates shade and it doesn't allow that water to evaporate. And I think in this case, where there was already some cracking along the edge of the roadway where the, the garbage trucks um, drive and the cars were parking, I think that, is that, that factor exacerbated this condition. So in this instance, we feel that um, if we were allowed to allow it to wait into the winter time, that our plows would be going through and actually chipping this pavement onto the parkway and, and into the private property. So um, at this time, we're requesting the uh, the approval of this change order to pave those three areas on Arrowhead Lane in the amount of $19,225. Motion approved. Second. Discussion? Quick call the roll, please. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Gapino? Yes. Number seven, John. Thank you, Mayor. This item is a change order, change order request from Rempe Sharp for the tr engineering services provided for the 2018 street maintenance program. D these engineering services were additional to the existing contract. Um, staff had requested uh, them, their services to specifically address three issues. The first issue um, that they took a look at was at the intersection of Deer Path and Orchard Gateway. Um, so it would be a little bit west of Orchard there. And at that intersection, there's kind of a goofy pie island in that area. And the pavement there was, dis, dis, well, it was, it was blowing up. There were a lot of potholes there. And at the time, we were hoping that we could get that included into the 2018 street program. Um, we had the engineering designed to, pr to provide a solution by which the contractor could give us an estimate when the contractor's estimate came back, we found that the prices they were giving us to perform that um, were a little bit higher than they should have been. Um, we tried to renegotiate with the contractor, pointing out where we thought that there could be some reduction. However, he was reluctant to reduce his um, estimate of the cost of that work. So staff 
felt at that time that we could make do with some patching in-house if necessary over the winter, but also that it would be more prudent to push that operation into the 2019 street maintenance program and address it at that time. Um, the second issue that we had uh, Rempe Sharp addressed was a addition of storm sewer inlets on Juniper Drive. When we were um, working on the paving of this road, um, it happened to be poor timing, but we were out there when uh, the detour route for the parade was, um, was enacted for the, the festival um, for North Aurora Days. So it provided a unique opportunity for staff to speak with a lot of the residents out there. And at that time, a couple of the residents had approached us saying that they had standing water in a certain area on the roadway and it occurred after big storms. And after staff kind of surveyed the situation, we found that there would be an easy fix to install a couple inlets not too far from where this area was to capture that water and get it off the pavement and make it a safer, um, safer driving experience during storms. So um, we asked Rempe Sharp to do some additional engineering to um, include that in the plans. And um, so that was the second item. The, the third item also um, occurred on Juniper Drive and that was simply, uh, we held a series of meetings with Juniper Drive residents to address um, a, a drainage concern that was happening in the backyards of the 200 block of Juniper. So we, had, over the period of time, we had come to understand that there were three or four residents that were, that sump pumps were backing up because of clogged storm sewers that um, were owned by the village. So the project was to replace that storm sewer to allow that sump discharge then to drain freely into our storm system and away from the, the foundations. So the Rempe Sharp performed um, additional services when we were explaining this to the residents um, and, and trying to explain the solution and then also how, to, uh, how we were gonna fix it for them. So the cost of those additional services, um, we still have sufficient funds within the capital fund to cover this uh, change order. But the, this particular request is in the amount of $11,137. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. I think you've given us plenty of detail, John. <laughs> uh, no yeah, further discussion. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Cofino? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. And item number eight, John. Thank you, Mayor. Um, each year, the village purchases salt to put down on the roads in the wintertime. Um, we do that through the joint purchasing program. Um, this program allows us to purchase 80% um, all the way up to 120% of the amount of tons we request in this program. This program is a two-year program. We're in the second year of this. The nice thing about this um, contract is that it, the state mandates that <laughs> the price of salt increases no more than a maximum of 10% in your second year. Um, when you look at the trends from past years, the, in 2016, 2017, the cost per ton was $65. It dropped last year to 53, um, 20 in 2017, 2018. And we're anticipating the cost going up. The contract this year came back at 58.52. Um, if we were to order 100% of the salt we believe we need, that total would be $133,133. However, as a safeguard, we always request the ability to purchase our 120% in case we get into a storm or the winter is really bad. So for that reason, we're asking um, for the, uh, the uh, purchase of salt in the amount of $133,133 with the option of purchasing up to an additional 20%, that would be an, an, a not to exceed amount of $159,759, which is just under our budgeted amount of $160,000. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? It's gonna be a mild winter. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> sure is. That's because you're going to California. <laughs> Any other discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Gaffino? Yes. 
And John, again, item number nine. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item is the request um, to approve a quote for Frost Electric, electric in the amount of $10,000 to install the uh, electrical components of the MIAX unit within the West Treatment Plant. Last year, we installed um, the MIAX generators in the East Plant. Um, you may recall at that time, we went out to bid for the project and it came back at $60,000 roughly, which was $40,000 greater than what we anticipated the cost to be. Staff decided that we could act as the general contractor to reduce that cost, and as a result, we were able to get um, individual quotes from all the subcontractors and perform the work at around $21,000 and complete the project. We're asking to do that same thing again, act as the general contractor ourselves, um, that we would be managing the mechanical contractor, the SCADA, um, installation which controls the um, the basically the scales and the measurements of the chemicals and we'd also be asking to manage the electrical contract because that quote came back at ten thousand dollars we need to bring that before the village board for approval <coughs> motion to approve second, second. discussion clerk call the roll please trustee lowry yes trustee Cofino? yes trustee curtis yes trustee carroll yes Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Very good. I have no old business. Uh, I have nothing to report. The village president, committee reports, trustee reports, uh, comments. Mr. Administrator? No report tonight, thank you. Mr. Attorney? No report. And the village department's finance, Mr. Hanna? Uh, no report. Community development, Mr. Toth? No report. Police Chief Fisher. No report, sir. Public Works, John Laskowski. No report. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. This cow meeting will start soon.